Hello viewers, welcome to Roving Report, a program that gives you an overview of the developments in India's northeast region. I am your host Chandrakala and the highlights of today's program are His Holiness the Dalai Lama on his visit to northeast India after 8 long years. Namami Brahmaputra Festival, the biggest ever river festival, stands out to be a turning point in the history of Assam. Through Digidhan Mela, centers strive for digital inclusivity across the country. And mushroom farming leads to entrepreneurship development in the state of Tripura. The Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, amidst much disputes and warning, is on his 12 days visit to Northeast India. The leader arrived in Assam's Guwahati city to launch his much-awaited autobiography in Asmis. The people across the Northeast region are all geared up to welcome His Holiness with much spirit and joy. The spiritual leader recalls his bygone days he spent in India 58 years ago. He also visited Tawang in Arunachal Pradesh. We bring you a special report. It is indeed a moment of joy for the people of North East to be able to seek blessings from the Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, who shares an emotional bond with the northeastern part of India, especially Assam and Arunachal Pradesh. The 81-year-old leader, who is on his first trip to the region after eight years, expresses emotional attachment with the states. He recalled his escape from Tibet to India 58 years ago. Starting his maiden visit, the leader arrived in Assam's Kohadi city to attend the Platinum Chupli celebration of the leading Assamese daily, the Assam Tribune. Thousands, including old and the young allied, gathered to get a glimpse of the holiness after a long time that ushered hopes and aspirations among the people. The leader recollected how he and his followers entered India via Arunachal Pradesh in 1959 and that he gets emotional when he visits Assam and Arunachal Pradesh. But then I extremely happy meeting or opportunity meeting one uh, old member of Asim Rifle, 1959, when I came across uh, the Asim Rifle, you see, helping me. So now, 58 years passed, so long old. I think must be retired on an old person. No, I, that, I really uh, feel very, very happy. The spiritual leader also unveiled the Assamese translation of his autobiography, My People, My Land, in a different program held under the aegis of Krishna Kanda Hantik State Open University. In Trani Laska, the translator of the book was honored during the auspicious gathering. He further enlightened the audience with his motivational thoughts and words. I feel very now we must sort of also promote sense of oneness for humanity. So the death of us is a poignant and just seven million beings are between our brothers and sisters. The Dalai Lama also made his gracious presence in Tibugad University before heading towards Tawang in Arunachal Pradesh. In his speech, he exhorted a younger generation to take a leave from the Japanese people's book, who displayed tremendous courage and resilience following the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki during the World War II. The 81-year-old leader also described himself as the longest staying case of the Indian government and expresses gratitude for his wholehearted and consistent support. Leaving no stone unturned in its preparations, the state of Arunachal Pradesh is also fully tacked up to welcome Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama. The Buddhist inhabitants of Dawang and West Kameng districts and capital city of Itanagar shared a heartfelt pleasure that they would be part of this historical event. His Holiness visit is purely religious, so His Holiness is our root guru and nobody has any right to say that His Holiness could not come here. This is our place. The people, ethnic, tribal, Manpa people are happy. The visit of His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama to Arunachal 
is purely religious in nature and there should be no political angle given to that. The people of Arunachal Pradesh desire to have a very good neighborly relation with the people of China. We never intend to have any kind of problem with our neighbors. The 14th Dalai Lama addressed the August gathering in Bomdila and preached the Buddhist inhabitants, assuring blessings upon them for which they waited eagerly for long years. 1959, uh, I come through this way. So, uh, recently I met some old, uh, some sort of, was it? Soldier. Some soldier, you see, uh, some rifle. Uh, you see, so when I met this, such people, very emotion. No? And anyway, uh, when I uh, said they get uh, freedom first time, when I reach uh, this area, come here. No? You see, always vivid. Right? Vivid, vivid memories. Vivid, vivid memory about those of uh, those times. So I feel very happy. He is also scheduled to deliver a religious sermon to the followers at Lumla, the Dawang Monastery, and the Mingwapa Monastery in Dirang. His Holiness, जो है एक हम लोग एक religious leader है, जो पूरा विश्व भर में पूरा एक renowned leader है. तो इनका जो यहां पे जो विजिट है वो टोटली हम लोग का रिलीजन को बेस करके है यहां के लोगों को एक रिलीजियस वे में पीचिंग देने का है और जहां तक ये बाउंड्री का जो इश्यूज है तो मैं तो हमेशा कहता हूं कि हमारे बाउंड्रीज जो है चाइना के साथ हम लोग शेयर नहीं करता है हम लोग बाउंड्री शेयर करते हैं टिबेट के साथ में Moreover, His Holiness will confer teachings at Kamlashilas, the Midling States of Meditation and Valse Tokme Sambhus, 37 practices of a Bodhisattva at Yika Chojing. Regarded as a lifeline to millions of people of the state and the region and a source of livelihood to many, Brahmaputri River is the most important natural feature of the state of Assam. The river is intrinsic to the economic and social cultural aspects of the state. Revered and respected Brahmaputra is the largest and the only male river in India and it flows from Sadia to Dhubri in Assam. As a mark of obeisance and to celebrate the ascents of the mighty river, the biggest river festival Namami Brahmaputra was organized in 21 districts of Assam. It highlighted the rich cultural and tourism potentialities of the state. A special report. Brahmaputra has been at the core of Assam's folklore, inspiring literature, music and art. Many poems, songs have been dedicated to the mighty river and for the people, their very lives revolve around it and its streams and tributaries. However, to bring forth the renaissance of the mighty river and as a mark of campaign and to create awareness among people and let the world know about their sense of the river in bringing prosperity to the lives of the people, Namami Brahmaputra or Obeisance to Brahmaputra, a festival like never before, was organized by Sarvananda Sonowal-led Assam government. President of India Pranab Mukherjee inaugurated the festival calling it the lifeline of the people of Northeast. Lakhs of visitors from across the country and the region gathered on the bank of the river to be a part of the celebration of the festival with much spirit and joy. River Brahmaputra passing through different states ultimately going into Bangladesh near to be and to be and reach its destination, the confluence at the open world. It has witnessed mighty programs, rise and fall of mighty empires. It has shown heroism, indomitable spirit of men and women living on the banks of Ramamutra. The auspicious day began with the Satra Adhikars from various Satras of Assam gracing the eventful ceremony. The festival aimed at showcasing the trade, tourism and cultural possibilities of the state along Brahmaputra River. We all know Brahmaputra is our civilization, Brahmaputra is our culture, Brahmaputra is our economy and Brahmaputra is our lifeline. So this Brahmaputra has given special status to the people of Assam in the map of the world. So now, 
being a son of this child, it is our duty to glorify River Abraham, its resources, its potentialities, and prosperities. Nam Prahonga, accompanied by Tal and Khol, marked the obeisance being paid to the mighty river by the Satradhikas. Brahmaputra Arti by the praise reverberated the atmosphere and offered the visitors a mystical overview of the beautiful river. The festival was celebrated in 21 districts of Assam along the Brahmaputra in its entire stretch from Sadia to Dhubri, celebrating the existence of life-sustaining river. Moreover, in the Brugar district of Assam, thousands converged on the boundless white sands of the Brahmaputra at Kachari Ghat to celebrate the indomitable spirit of the life-giving river. Brahmaputra Nadi is our life and this Nadi is not only a part of Sanskriti, but it is a part of the trade and the trade of the trade of the trade and the trade of 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 the trade. Varieties of cultural dance, music, art forms and cuisine, handloom, handicrafts, etc. of various communities of the state were the major highlights during the five-day long festival. On the second day of the festival, Tibetan spiritual leader Dalai Lama made his congenial presence and blessed the people and state of Assam. I want to extend my good wishes and greetings to the people of this state, Assam. And then, uh, as the, I think, very, very able government, governor and the chief minister, I think the uh, people, uh, I feel it's a future, your future is more uh, prosperous and more unity. It is noteworthy that the Tibetan spiritual leader shared an emotional moment with retired Havildar of Assam Rifles who escorted him to India during his escape from Tibet in March 1959. Along with the Northeastern state's dignitaries, Bhutanese Prime Minister Shering Tobge, who attended the inaugural event as a guest of honor, claimed that Brahmaputra is pride of Southeast Asia and there should be cross-country event to promote the mighty river. Besides this, foreign delegates from Japan, China, Thailand, Vietnam and a host of other nations also marked their gracious presence in the festival. Moreover, a special tribute was also paid to the legendary singer late Dr. Bhupen Hazarika, whose words, thoughts and his deep tribute to the mighty river was always reflected in his beautiful composition of songs. <laughs> Let us now take a look at some of the events that made news in the Northeast recently. First Women in the District Football Club Championship was recently held at Moriani in Assam's Torhan district. The tournament was organized by Assam Football Association with an aim to popularize the game in the state. Twelve women football clubs from Assam took part in the week-long tournament. Street Scott, an organization which promotes adventure sports, beauty pageants, music shows in the country, especially in the Nordic region, had recently organized an autocross motocross rally in Maulingta village in Mekalia. Held the rally at the longest racing track in the country of more than four kilometers, motorsports lovers from across the state and the neighboring areas thrown at the event venue. The fifth Akatala talk show was recently organized by Tripura Veterinary Doctors Association at the Vivekananda Stadium in Akatala. The stadium was filled with over 100 German shepherds, leopards, road dwellers, Talmatian, and Swedes from across the country. Thousands of dog lovers gathered at the show to witness the show, while others came with their pets. Over 60 dogs of 12 breeds took part in the show. Many locals came to watch the proceedings and do research and talk to breeders and to find the breeds of dogs that may suit the families. The Films Division of the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting recently organized a film festival come workshop in Imphal. A total of 28 individuals from different backgrounds such as literature, music, theater, photography participated in the nine-day workshop program. The event was held with the aim to popularize state films. 
Heavy rainfall lashed parts of Northeast India, affecting daily life of locals. In Manipur, two persons were killed due to thunderstorms and hailstorms. The sudden rainfall also destroyed standing crops in parts of Mizora, Meghalaya, and Manipur. States like Assam, Sikkim, and Arunachal Pradesh also experiencing heavy rainfall. Well, viewers, sense of fashion and style comes naturally to the people of Northeast India, especially the youngsters. Be it about making a personal statement or following trends, people from the region are known for their impeccable sartorial sense. Today, we introduce to you a self-taught upcoming fashion designer from the landlocked state of Nagaland, whose designs have garnered rave reviews across the globe. Take a look. Meet the 23-year-old Ajumbo Chawang, a dynamic and upcoming fashion designer from Ziliang community, Nagaland, whose designs have already set a benchmark in the world of fashion. Ajumbo, a self-taught designer, started sketching and designing during his school days for family, friends and relatives for special occasions. However, this talented young lad got his first breakthrough from the costumes he designed for Burble Fusion's vocalist, late Lamsala Sangtam India, Hoi Hei, you came along official video. Since then, there's been no looking back for Chawang as more shows came his way. First, I give myself into music, this is piano, instrumental. Then, uh, in the year 2010, I suppose, uh, for Mr. International India. Just uh, viewers. Okay. I went there and then I was keen to see those dramatic costumes of different states of India. So like kind of like little bit that feeling comes for the for the fashion. Then it happens and uh, while I was in the hostel that same year, I started sketching. Then later on I started stitching for my own uh, for my own dresses and then for my family members, that's how I started. A multi-featured persona, Chawang is not only a fashion designer and pianist, but also a photographer. Chawang's designs stand out for their clean cuts and chicness. The designer designs for both men and women. His first preference is ready-to-wear garments, followed by bridal wares. In India, I've done ones for Notice Festival, and then the other one in India, we didn't... In the, Delhi, North Fista, which is in Sakit Salix okay. Diwok, and then once in Punjab, collaborated with uh, Wills Lifestyle last year, mm -hmm. and this year I did for Vienten Wow Fashion Show, which is in Bangkok. Okay. There, are, I don't know how, how many shows I've done so far, maybe around 15 shows so far, or m maybe more than that. For his design showcase adventure, WOW Fashion Week 2017 in Bangkok, Chawang drew inspiration from humanity. Apart from that, some of his spectacular designs, including his showstopper costumes, Chawang used an embroidery technique from his own community called Nitu Nina. Being in the fashion industry, most of them say it's like more about art or something else. But for me, I think I go more into humanity. In my, most of my garments or most of my collections, you will see very formality in dresses, not that open cuts in my garments. You see mostly casuals, office wears and wedding garments for both Indians and for white, white bridal. For me, traditions, they give me more creativity and for my concept, mostly I take inspiration from monuments because there are lots of patrons there so whenever I love to travel more because I want to shoot pictures and from there I get inspired. Chawang is also working on a line of custom-made handbags for both men and women making a way forward to launch more designs. Youngsters like Chawang inspires others their age to follow their passion and dreams and be example setter in a society. With Prime Minister Narendra Modi's initiative of demonetization to curb corruption in the country, promotion of cashless economy is doing the round across the nation. Digidhan Mela is one such initiative and steps to promote cashless transaction and spreading awareness about digital payments in the country. Recently, one such Mela was held in Imphal, bringing merchants and consumers sharing one platform for common cause. A report. 
For the first of its kind in the landlocked state of Manipur, Centre's initiative for digital transactions, Digital Mela seeks to promote cashless economy through digital mode of transactions at City Convention Centre in Imphal. With an objective to encourage cashless modes of payment to the people of Manipur, State Chief Minister N. Biran Singh, Union Minister Kiran Richiju and Rashin Gohain created the event at the state capital, Imphal. For promoting cashless payment, various channels was launched at the Mela such as Rupee, Atar Enabled Payment System, Unified Payment Interface, Unstructured Supplementary Service Data, Immediate Payment Service, e-wallet and Point of Sale Machine respectively. It is already happening because we have the common service centers who are taking a lead role in doing this in the rural areas. Uh, we have about 700 common service centers. Out of this, about 300 to 400 are actively pursuing uh, introducing these cashless uh, payments in the rural areas. Most of the banks have also launched mobile apps to enable consumers to make cashless payments in digital form. In endeavors to promote awareness among the consumers and the business community, so far the digital melas have been held across 100 different cities in the country. I have given my, some message to the people of the state that we have already started changing ourselves. That free corruption, free corruption is not going to be anti-corruption sale. Anti-corruption sale to attach to my office. Madam, we saw that we can monitor each and every office and uh, everywhere. During the Digitan Mela, around 30 to 35 stalls from the state and other parts of the country opened to impart knowledge about digital payment. Apart from merchants, young and old alike consumers thrown at the event to get to know how of the initiatives and implementing it for hassle-free cashless payments. With such initiative, the state have also produced country's first cashless island known as Karang Island, situated in Loktak Lake, the largest freshwater lake in northeast India. Today, the people need performance, people need result, especially the younger generation. They are not satisfied with merely good words. They are not satisfied with the promises alone. We have to re-establish the faith of the political leadership in our society. And that is possible if only we can be honest, transparent and accountable in our way of dealing with the issues concerning the welfare of the people. Such initiative will uphold the essence of Go Digital, Go Cashless team for Prime Minister Modi's vision for Digital India. Peace and development is a buzzword in the Northeast. Let's take a quick look at some development news from the region. Mekhalia Governor Banwari Lal Purohit recently inaugurated a skill development center at Rilpon in Shillong. Addressing the gathering, the governor loaded the women group named Supam for taking the initiative in setting up the skill development center for the youth in the state. Mekhalia Governor also announced Rs 2.5 lakh for the center. A fortnight-long Ban East Trade Expo was recently held at Nahar Lakun in Arunachal Pradesh. Organized by A1 Charitable Society, the expo witnessed participation from traders from all across the country. Stalls of various handicraft items from different states of the country attracted visitors. With an endeavor to preserve and propagate the art and craft skill of the local artisans of the landlocked state of Sikkim and to provide job opportunities to the school dropouts, the Directorate of Handicrafts and Handloom in the state is doing their bit in generating employment opportunities for the young girls. Take a look. Due to financial problems and lack of adequate facilities, many youngsters, especially girls, drop out of the school in Sikkim. However, to empower women and arrest dropout trade in the region, the Directorate of Handicrafts and Handloom of the state are generating employment opportunities by providing skilled training on handloom and craft making. Girls of different age groups are acquiring the training without any hindrances, which has made them self-reliant. As many as 100 student workers are getting trained in the institute, especially girls. Various techniques of weaving items are taught to the girls under the proper guidance of trained instructors. 
However, with better qualified youngsters grabbing the job opportunities, the dropouts are left with very few options. In order to tackle such situation, the directorate takes up the responsibility and offers them fair amount of jobs depending on their training. Boys are the basic and the commissary interest. They go to the same Girls are the I perceive training girls are unel kus. Apnu lagi lagi girls. Ab tovar enbo ya. Hamro ingi ni average mein enbo girls basic nisa. Ab girl basic unel karan jo wale unel zabo kam puni girls sa sa the kati ora afi garam bunsa. Ya puni girls sa garam girls sa garin na bhai hamile 2009 dekhi. Moreover, after undergoing rigorous training for almost two years, the girls are given a choice of working in the institute or starting a private enterprise of their own. Well, we were the Northeast region is bestowed with abundance of nature's gift. Blessed with lush greenery and unspoiled beauty, the region is favorable for cultivation of crops. However, mushroom cultivation has become a small scale agriculture alternative for many in the Northeast. Realizing the potential of this non-traditional cash crop, many people in the northeastern state of Tripura are shifting their attention on mushroom cultivation and it has become a profitable venture for many there. We have a report. Entrepreneurial activities among people have taken a toll in the West Tripura as they are earning income through mushroom production. A group of youth who are into full-time job in the state has taken up mushroom production as a part of their responsibility and has turned themselves into self-employed entrepreneurs. One such young boy is Suman Bhattacharji, a self-employed entrepreneur who after acquiring proper training on mushroom cultivation and production is running a mushroom production centre in Anand Nagar in West Tripura since 2015. He is not only an inspiration for many, but at the same time generating employment opportunities for the unemployed youth of the region. I have already spent more than 16 years. Then I think that I, I have to do something for myself and for the state and for, the, some, for some people. I want to create some uh, and, uh, that is employment. Uh, gen, uh, employment. Uh, then I think that uh, firstly what to do. So uh, in the mushroom sector in the agriculture in the horticulture there is a uh, sector which is uh, mushroom so mushroom people uh, uh, likes very much but the thing is that it is it is uh, it helps the people in uh, the uh, if someone is suffering from blood pressure uh, sugar and cholesterol uh, diabetes in that case it helps us uh, it helps the patients uh, very much in the production centre, the entire process of mushroom production takes place where first the straws are soaked in water and left for drying. Following that, the spawning process takes place for the planting of mushrooms. Spawning is done lightly at the bottom of the bag and when it is being done, the layer of the spawn is then covered with 2 inches of paddy straws which is tightly pressed to make it compact. After that, the polythene bag is kept inside a room for 12 to 14 days. After the entire process, mushroom appears in flushes. The farmers are given proper training on the technique of mushroom cultivation and its production work under Suman's farm. As many as six women farmers are working and earning their livelihood and promoting women empowerment. এতো মাশরুমের কাজ করতাছি আমরা টাকা পয়সা কিছু আয় উন্নতি হইতাছে এর লাগি করতাছি আর কি তো আমরা সংসারে কাজে লাগে পুলাবনের পড়া করছো পড়া করছো তো সারা লাগে একলা তো আর স্বামী পারে না তা আমরা বাড়ি বই আছে কি দুই দুই পয়সা ইনকাম হইলে তো কোনো ক্ষতি নাই Many localites believe that since there is a growing demand of mushroom in the local market, its demand can further increase if the government takes up initiative to spread the message on benefit of consuming mushroom. Market of Baloi grew up to say that I got to pass Bosora get Jeo Bostasilo Sheta as a pass Bosor for a Baloi grew up to say marketing there. Bottomane Jereta Je 
এমনিতে আমরা পাইকারি যেটা আমি সেলসম্যানের কাজটাই করি একশো আশি টাকা দুশো টাকার মতোই চলছে আর কি তারা রিটেল রিটেল তারা আড়াইশো টাকা তিনশো টাকা বিক্রি করে Presently, the average daily production of oyster mushroom from the center is around 25 kgs, which are sold at a reasonable rate to the consumers. Mushroom cultivation is not only encouraging you to take up startups, but also encouraging more farmers of the region to take up mushroom cultivation. Moreover, every year many visitors visit the center and get an insight of this interesting concept of mushroom production in the landlocked state of Tripura. Well, viewers, with that, we have come to the end of this episode of Roving Report. Do connect with us through our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at anyindia underscore ANI. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to get latest news updates from the Northeast. I'm your host, Chandrakala, signing off. Goodbye and take care.